When Mr. Olinga, the hand of the cause of God, at that time he was not a hand, visited the beloved guardian in Haifa, Shoghi Effendi told him that every seeker should pass through three stages. First, the seeker is attracted to the cause. Second, he accepts the cause and is converted to it. Third, he becomes consecrated to that cause. And the three stages were summed up by Shoghi Effendi as attraction, conversion, and consecration. I have often thought about this until I read these words of the beloved guardian. He wrote these words about two months and a, a, a week or so after the passing of Abdul Baha. And Amatul Baha Ruhiya Khanum has quoted these words of the beloved guardian in her priceless pearl. It's not January 1922. He wrote, The time has come for the friends the world over to think not as to how they should serve the cause, but how the cause should be served. There is a subtle difference here between the two positions. I would like to read that passage again. The time has come for the friends the world over to think not as to how they should serve the cause, with my emphasis, but how the cause should be served. In the first position, the center is the individual. He says, all right, depending upon my circumstances, I'll see what I can do, and so on and so forth. He becomes the center. The cause must turn around him or her. In the second position, the cause of God is the center. And the individual revolves around, circles around the cause of God to see what it needs at any given time. For this condition to be attained, one has to be in love with the cause of God. It is not any more enough to believe in the cause of God and recognize the manifestation of God. One should love the manifestation of God. Love me that I may love thee. So recognition by itself seems to be not enough, insufficient. It has to be supported by love. Love for the manifestation of God. We should learn how to love Baha'u'llah. In one of his passages, <coughs> passages in the Gleanings, Baha'u'llah says, after the recognition of the manifestation of God, the two obligations that follow are steadfastness in his love and obedience to his commands. So you see, it's not only love, but it is steadfastness in one's love for Baha'u'llah because there are many tests that come our way. And we should be able to withstand these tests and overcome them. And as a result of these tests, our love for Baha'u'llah should intensify. The flame should burn more fiercely. So he says, steadfastness in one's love. <clears throat> This reminds me of a little story that I have made up. This story, however, is based on one of the statements made by Abdu'l-Bahá 
in one of his tablets. <clears throat> and it also reminds me of the well-known prayer of Baha'u'llah. I know not, O my God, what the fire is which thou didst kindle in thy land. And so the story goes like this. Once upon a time, there was a piece of iron buried somewhere in a valley. And a Baha'i de teacher passes by and picks up that piece of metal and tells, we have to, of course, at this point, credit this piece of metal with intelligence and with a soul, with a human soul. And so the teacher tells this piece of metal, you know, I want to tell you about the fire which is raging and blazing in the world of existence. Are you interested? He says, yes. He says, let's get along. I'll show you. They walk, and from a distance, they see some smoke. And he says, you see that smoke? Wherever there is smoke, there is fire. And at that point, some teachers are so much in haste that they produce the declaration card and say, well, since you have accepted that there should be some fire, why don't you sign the declaration card? But it's really too soon at that point. So let's get along with the story. The teacher says, this is not enough. Let us approach the fire. And say they walk a little. And now they hear the crackling of the fuel, or if you like, the, the, the branches of the trees. He says, do you hear? He says, yes, this is fire. He says, this is not enough. Let's approach it a little bit more. And he sees the flame. Do you see it? Yes, I do. He says, this is not enough. Let's get just a little bit closer. And he feel, feels the warmth. And he is warm himself after being cold. At that point, if he produces a declaration card, it seems to me it's all right. <laughs> the story is not finished. I'm continuing the thought of Abdul Baha. The teacher says, you know, my friend, let us throw ourselves into the fire. And he accepts. And they jump into the fire. And you know what happens to this metal? This metal, which was dark, suddenly becomes luminous. It changes its color. It sheds off the skin of rust which surrounded it. It becomes luminous like the fire. So much so that it is difficult to distinguish where the metal ends and where the flame begins. This, I think, is consecration. It is this transformation which God expects each one of us to reach and not stop at stage two. but acquire the qualities of fire so that this fire will burn within us so that in everything we do wherever we go whatever we say will be a manifestation of that fire a reflection of that fire this I believe is consecration. This, I believe, is when we put the cause first and not ourselves first. This is when we have our priorities in the right order.
What steps can a person take to become consecrated if they believe in the cause of God but are not consecrated yet? As to this question of consecration and how to attain consecration, I tell you that it is impossible for us to attain consecration without the help of God. It is a combination between our personal will, the exercise of our personal will, and the confirmations of God. When the two meet, then there is a transformation that takes place. But you need that help of God. It is like asking God to hold your hand. O oh God, hold thou my hand. But supposing your hand is in your pocket and you say, Oh God, help thou, guide me, hold thou my hand. Do you think he's going to hold your hand? I'm not God, but I'm telling you, he's not going to hold it. <laughs> because it's in your pocket. But bring out your hand, extend it towards him. Pray him, supplicate him not only with words, but with deeds. Beg him. He will hold your hand and he will guide you for the rest of your lives. Be sure. 